Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're discussing what to watch out for when you are looking at homes here in the state of Maryland. So if you're considering making a move here to the area and you're gonna be house hunting soon, this video is for you and let's get started right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Living in Maryland channel where we talk about all things living here in the great state of Maryland. So if that's the kind of information that you're looking for, then you are definitely in the right spot and we really appreciate you being here. And if you are considering whether making a move uh, here to the Maryland area is the right decision for you and your family, if you're wondering what purchasing a home looks like um, and just having a conversation about uh, kind of the pros and cons of that and if that's uh, the right move for you at this time. We absolutely love having those conversations with people. So however you feel comfortable reaching out, we'd absolutely love to talk to you, whether that's by phone, text, or email, days, nights, and weekends. We've got your back when moving here to the great state of Maryland. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is something I actually am stealing from Stephen Covey and his seven uh, habits of highly effective people, but it's gonna be beginning with the end in mind. And what I mean by this is um, when you're house hunting, when you're looking to purchase uh, your home, I know it's not, um, the most or the easiest thing to think about when you may be selling that home But that's always something that I kind of encourage people to do and something that I try to practice myself when I've uh, Bought homes over the years. So just thinking about okay Eventually, there's probably gonna come a time where I'm gonna need to sell this home Is this a home that other people are gonna like because in my experience um, and I've sold bought and sold um, about four properties now um, when that when that flip switches, when I'm ready to pull the trigger and sell a piece of property that I own, it's something that I just want to get over with and just, you know, hurry up and get it done. Um, so when that happens and you're in that position, you don't want to have a property that other people don't want or that's not going to be, uh, you know, a good fit for the general public in the marketplace. So having a property um, that's going to be, you know, marketable to um, the typical buyer out there is going to be something that's huge. So that's always something, of course, it's not, you know, a, a bulletproof, uh, you know, rule, but it's something to maybe just keep in mind. So for example, I showed a home about two weeks ago. It was a rancher kind of in this uh, more custom built community, but still um, a community nonetheless. So this is, you know, within Howard County, Maryland. So um, a pretty developed uh, part of central Maryland. And this home had, it was a, a five bedroom home. It had uh, the, on the main level, it had kind of the master uh, bedroom with you know a large ensuite, but that was the only bedroom on the entire level. And then of course it had the kitchen and living room and everything on that main level. And then in the basement, it had the four other rooms to total the five bedrooms. So, um, and the, mar the home has been on the market a long time. It's not selling as of yet. And actually recently, the, um, uh, the past couple of days, I checked and they pulled it off the market. So, and the reason why I mentioned this is this is kind of an example of a home that um, is not really suitable to the masses. So a lot of families are going in there, I'm sure, um, just like the people I took in there and they're looking at that and they're saying, well, I don't wanna be separated from my kids. I want my kids on the same you know, floor as me. And I've seen this sometimes too in homes where maybe there's three total bedrooms, there's two on the main level, and then the third is in the basement. And sometimes families don't like that as much. So just kind of, those are just kind of a couple examples of things to keep in mind so that when you're looking at homes, um, you know, and you're kind of thinking about these things. Okay, is this something that other people are gonna like? And that way, when the time comes, when you're ready to list that property and sell it and move on to whatever the next chapter is, you're not kind of stuck with a property that maybe not a ton of buyers are gonna like. So um, it's always hard to find, you know, or to sell a property rather where it's just kind of, you, you're looking for a very, very specific buyer. So it's always nice to have a property where you're kind of able to market and appeal to the masses. So just something to keep in mind in that regard. All right, next thing I wanna mention is gonna be, does the home have natural light? And the reason why I mention this is just because so many buyers over the years um, that I've taken out, uh, this is something that's very, very important to them. So uh, just kind of having a home that has that, that natural light, you know, most people just seem to, to really be drawn to that is gonna help uh, kind of your property value and help whenever that time comes to, to kind of unload the property as well. Um, so just kind of something to keep in mind that I've noticed um, a lot of buyers have interest in uh, over the years in my experience. All right, next thing I wanna mention is gonna be smell of the home and just kind of being aware of um, any scents that may be, you know, as far as pet odors or smoking, these are kind of the two biggest ones that uh, buyers kind of point out to me of, of as at least smells of concern. Um, and especially I wanna mention this is just because over the last couple of years working with a lot of people, 
um, through this channel and, th and people reaching out through these videos um, who are actually buying homes from out of the area and maybe not coming to physically visit the property. So this is something when I'm looking on people's behalf and working with people, this is something that I always am very aware of. So I wanna make sure people are aware of exactly what that looks like, because it's not anything you can see, obviously. So just kind of paying attention to that, especially if you are someone who's gonna be house hunting uh, virtually and not physically visiting the properties. All right, next is gonna be how open concept is a property. And this is something that uh, you know I just kind of like to mention because most people are starting to look at homes online. That's kind of the common entry point and starting point when you start kind of your house hunting um, search. So, um, and in my experience, it seems like right around the year 2000, uh, maybe late 90s is when homes really started to um, kind of be built with more of this open concept uh, style. I think builders just kind of finally started catching on to kind of what buyers really wanted. And it's something that's you know extremely important to most buyers. And with how good uh, these professional photographers have gotten over the years with, with these uh, angles and the lenses and the brightness and stuff, it's so common to walk into a property and look at the living room or the kitchen or bedrooms and they just feel so much smaller um, and not as open concept as they look in the photo. So if open concept is important to you, just kind of checking out and, and making sure that those, uh, those photos are telling the true story. And this is where uh, getting into a property in person um, is just so important to where you can really tell because sometimes these photos, it, it, they can just be very misleading and make rooms look so much bigger than they actually are. So something to keep in mind, depending on how important um, that open concept style is to you. All right, next thing I wanna mention is gonna be uh, the age of the major systems in the home. And when I say major systems, the things that uh, stand out to me and the things that I like to look out for are gonna be roof, uh, HVAC, which is your heating and air, uh, hot water heater, uh, and windows. And just kind of overall, because those are gonna be your big ticket items in the home. So if you, um, and hot water heater is gonna be at the bottom of that. You know, it's probably about a thousand bucks to, to fully replace a hot water heater. but. Um, that's still a lot of money, so we would definitely want to keep that in mind. But those are going to be the kind of the bigger ones that I like to look out for and that I encourage buyers to look out for, just so you kind of know, um, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, you want to factor that stuff in as much as possible when it comes to your offer, because when it comes to the home inspection, um, it's very uncommon to get a seller to fully replace um, some of those larger ticket items. So. Um, kind of knowing what that looks like so you can really factor that into your offer is, is ideal. And then also, uh, once you get into that property, so you're able to, you know, just kind of be aware of what, you know, your expenses are going to look like in the first year or two as you adjust financially um, into that home purchase. So, um, you know, in Maryland, you're going to see a couple different kinds of, of shingles here. When it comes to roof, you're going to have an architectural shingle, which is typically a 30 year life expectancy. And then you're gonna have a three tab shingle, which is typically a 20 to 25 year life expectancy. It's gonna depend on weather, uh, how many trees, you know, foliage that's being dropped on that, that rooftop. So just kinda, kinda looking at that with your agent and, and you know, seeing what that looks like so you kinda have an idea of what to expect. And uh, when you're thorough with these things, this is something that I really like to, to be thorough with, uh, really at the showing time before any offers are written, before any contracts are had on a property, so that there's no surprises or at least limited surprises when it comes to the home inspection, right? Because it's never fun when you get to the home inspection and there's just, you know, the inspector drops this big ball on you and you're just like left, you know, very stressed out about it and wondering, you know, if it's going to you know, change the deal or impact the deal. So, you know, getting ahead of that stuff at the showing uh, process um, is something that I really encourage. So, so we talked about roofs, um, heating and air. This is another thing. A lot of sellers will mention, you know, a oh, brand new HVAC or HVAC 2020. And, you know, you think it's, it's very new and, and that very well could be true, but there's two parts to the HVAC um, that I really, you know, that are very common here in Maryland. So you got the indoor furnace and then you've got the outdoor condenser. So sometimes sellers will say, oh, brand new HVAC, and they only replace the indoor unit and the outdoor unit wasn't touched because you can replace one, but not the other. So just kind of keeping this in mind when you're looking at homes, looking at the indoor furnace, trying to, to look for a manufacture date on that. And then I actually more commonly see the manufacture date on the outdoor condenser. So just kind of looking for that and understanding what that looks like. And also understanding the difference between a heat pump, which is very common that you're gonna see here in Maryland, and then a gas furnace. So if you see natural gas in the property, um, because the gas furnaces don't use the outdoor condenser in the winter, you're typically gonna see a longer life expectancy on those units, usually 20-ish, maybe pushing 25, you never know with those. Um, if it's a heat pump, so if it's all electric, it's most likely gonna be heat pump. 
those use the outdoor condenser year round. And it's gonna, because of that, the life expectancy from the manufacturers are usually around 12 to 15 years. So just kind of understanding the difference between those two so that when you go into a property, you can be educated and you can look at those dates and you can know what to expect from that unit once you get into the property. All right, next is gonna be windows. So this is uh, something that I feel like gets overlooked from time to time, but this this is definitely a big ticket item. If you're looking at a, you know, a 2000 square foot home um, above grade, you know, so plus the basement um, and up as far as square footage, I mean, it can easily be 20 to 30 grand to replace all those windows. So um, especially with increased cost for everything. And I know windows is still one of those things where it just is taking a long time to get. So not overlooking uh, windows and the age of windows is something that I always like to prioritize and just kind of looking at those and gauging what the year is um, as far as the age of those. So you know what that looks like. And uh, I like to look for, you know, one overall, just kind of how much age can you ballpark when you're visually looking at, the, at those windows? So how old do they look? And then two, looking for, is there any fogginess? Is there any moisture? So if you're seeing a lot of moisture in some of those windows, that's just kind of a, I guess, an indicator that, you know, there's some age to those windows and, and you may want to talk about or plan to uh, kind of replace those windows in the near future and just kind of know that that expense is coming. Um, and then next is going to be the hot water heater. So as I mentioned, this is going to be probably one of the more affordable ones as far as the bigger ticket items, but something to definitely keep in mind. So um, the thing that I like to look for here is if you can find a manufacturer date, of course, that's awesome. And then also knowing that home inspectors are going to recommend um, that you start budgeting for replacement on a hot water heater once it reaches about 10 to 12 years of, of you know, its life. So uh, that's what uh, manufacturers recommend, although they can go a lot longer. It's not uncommon to see a 20 year old hot water heater, but home inspectors are gonna start recommending replacement once it reaches that 10 to 12 year uh, mark. So just kind of understanding that so that when you're looking at dates, you can kind of know what to expect there. So the thing that I like to look for for hot water heaters to kind of get a really good gauge on how soon it might need to be replaced is if there's any rust at the bottom of that hot water heater. So that's a really good indicator of how much life it has left and how close it could be to start to, you know, leak or, you know, kind of burst. So that's kind of something that we don't want to avoid, right? Um, that's a very common uh, way of basements flooding is through the, the hot water heater because you're always going to see those at the lowest level of the home and most homes that's going to be the basement. So just kind of keeping an eye out for that so you kind of know what to expect um, as you're looking at the, that item. And next is going to be um, asking and inquiring about what um, appliances are going to be staying with the property. In Maryland, it's extremely common um, for your refrigerators and of course your stove, microwave, dishwasher, all those kitchen appliances to stay with the property. Um, I would say, you know, almost 100% of the time you're going to see those items stay. Uh, the washer and dryer, I would say most of the time will stay. Um, it's important to ask about that because on occasion, sellers will take those with them. It's just going to be part of the contract. You, you know, you want to kind of take a look at that and just kind of see what that looks like depending on the seller. Um, but I would say probably 75% of the time, the washer and dryer are going to stay, stay. So it's something that you can expect, um, but definitely something you want to look into um, on each property just to make sure that you have an idea going into writing an offer and going into uh, getting a contract on a property on exactly what that looks like. So um, if you ask your agent, you know, this is something that we as agents can look up. So typically, uh, most sellers are going to upload disclosures into our MLS system. And one of those initial disclosures is going to be uh, an inclusion document. So we uh, typically can see that ahead of time. So you can know before you write an offer exactly what's staying and exactly what's not. Um, and then also just miscellaneous items. So, you know, so some sellers, they're going to leave certain things and they plan to, you know, take maybe, maybe there's a fixture in the home, right? In the, in the living room that they plan to take but maybe it's not you know, written or advertised in the listing, um, but maybe it's in that inclusion exclusions document. So just kind of you know, asking um, and inquiring about, you know, is everything staying as we saw it you know, at the showing and, and as it's advertised in the MLS, or are there any uh, individual items that are being taken just so you can know and factor that into your offer so that's all understood up front. And then last but not least is understanding the plumbing and the sewer type. So, um, most of the time, if you're looking at properties, you know, within central Maryland um, that are in a, you know, traditional community, um, it's going to be public water, public sewer. But 
there's definitely exceptions to that depending on where you're at. You know, for example, in parts of Anne Arundel County, there's a lot of parts of, you know, Pasadena, Millersville, Severna Park, where even if it's in a smaller community, um, you know, even parts of Annapolis, you may see, um, you know, well and or septic. So just kind of looking into that, just making sure you're understanding that before you go to look at properties. Because if you're like, you know, absolutely no septic or well for me, then you definitely don't want to, you know, waste your time going to visit a property that may uh, have that. So just kind of looking into that and understanding what that looks like um, so that you know of that ahead of time. And then the type of plumbing, this is something that when I'm in properties, I like to look for and just kind of confirm exactly what it is. So you're going to see a lot of copper and a lot of PVC. Um, but in the uh, early 90s to, you know, usually around 89 to 94, we saw what's called polybutylene. It's a plastic uh, type of piping in a decent amount of homes here uh, in the Maryland area. And it was really throughout the whole kind of Northeast. But this is something that it's a discontinued type of pl uh, plumbing. It had more, you know, leaking and bursting uh, capabilities. Um, so it was discontinued and it's definitely something that still exists out there. Uh, the properties that had it, just they were kind of stuck with it unless the homeowners went in there and replaced um, all that plumbing. So you're just kind of being aware, especially in that, um, those kind of years from 89 to 94, just kind of double checking when you're in those properties and looking for that type of plumbing to make sure that you're aware, okay, does it have it or does it have the more traditional copper and PVC that you really want to see? Cause those are, um, the most common, you know, proven type of, uh, you know, plumbing types out here. So just kind of being aware of that and making sure that you, uh, look for that, especially in those, uh, those years. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. If you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out and we'll see you at the next video.